ladies and gentlemen, my name is Royce and welcome back to A Drink With Crazy. It is 7.30 in the morning. I have my coffee here. I'm also very tired because we had a stream going to like 11.30ish last night, which isn't late for a lot of streamers, but for me, because I'm not used to it, that was pretty late. Mm. And as always on Sundays, we are here to read your comments throughout the weeks, which you guys have... Uh, brought to the table the conversations that you've made me think about and there's a really fun one in here that I have been saving all week like it's awesome I probably shouldn't be doing this at 7 30 in the morning but I like doing the coffee streams the coffee streams are fun so mm. oh and I need my coffee <clears throat> and literally these videos take too long otherwise if I don't do them this early in the morning so anyway, let me know what you guys think down in the premiere chat if you guys are liking this video. I should be down in the premiere chat with you, talking with you guys, having a good time. And I also want to know <clears throat> what you guys think of the channel, how you guys, what channel topics you guys would like me to cover, what things you think I should talk about. Um, I, I know a few of you already will be there, and I have a feeling I know what you will say. So I will dismiss you people, because I will. But anyway, let's get into reading your comments we are going to read your comments from reading your comments number nine last week's uh somebody brought that up to me that it would be a good idea to start on that one and so <clears throat> yeah all right i gotta i hate that they prioritize the top first instead of the newest that makes no sense uh xavier guzman he, he's quoting me here i slept in till 5 30 a.m <laughs> I slept in till like 6.30 today. I was like, eh, you know, and then I just laid there for a while. I was like, well, I'll get up and make coffee. And I guess, you know, go do videos. So I slept in till 6.30 today, okay? Like, fuck, sorry for being lazy. I, I'll fucking get up at 3.45 like I normally do, jeez. Um, <laughs> thank you, Xavier Guzman. Uh, Daniel Davis is, came here from Shad. Uh, uh, the Conqueror is a very is very violent at times, and the main character is basically the biggest villain uh, the world has ever seen reformed. Not for kids. This is uh, a uh, there is a little nudity in the book, but I don't think Shad would put it in uh, the comics since uh, it can be done without showing uh, anything but reactions. And the worst violence is a reference not explicitly described. I, I was listening. Shad was on with Rikeda two nights ago, and Rikeda had said to Shad, "Is this something that I would get, like, the leather bound for me, and then like a copy that for like the kids to destroy?" And he's like, "Yeah, pretty much." And Shad never said I wouldn't let your kids read this, so I don't think the book is going to be anything more than probably like a PG-13. That's just what I got. That's just the feeling I got from that conversation. I could be entirely wrong. Um, I could absolutely be entirely wrong. All right, Mango Juice. <clears throat> it says, I'm the German spy in your comments section, plotting an invasion of the U.S. to stop Star Wars from making more movies. Uh, your Mahler voice talk was really funny. Keep up the good work. Uh, yes, yes, I remember this comment. And I, 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 if, if, if she is a German spy who is being sent over here to make sure that Star Wars stops getting produced, I will join her in her efforts. I think that that is a noble, noble cause. Um, all right, the next video that we have up. Oh God, this is this one's gonna be a doozy. I was a lot of people were not happy with me about this one. All right. And okay, just need to make sure that one was still there. It's been edited heavily, so I don't even know if it's the original. I have the original. Well, one of them. All right. <clears throat> Ooh, Xavier Guzman started this one off too. I do love me some doom and gloom though. Yeah, so Cyberpunk Edge Runners was uh, it was very very nihilistic and um, sorry, I had to refresh that. For some reason, YouTube's not loading properly. Um, it was very, very nihilistic story. Uh, there was just, there was no, like, happy ending to it. There was no good people. There was no, like, every, it was just, it's, I've seen that story before, and 
Uh, somebody that I was talking to, one of my, uh, Matt, you guys know him from Bra Hollow Nights. Uh, I was talking with him and he goes, this show sounds like The Last of Us 2. I was like, no, dude, the writing is way better. But like, yeah, pretty much. It's about as nihilistic as The Last of Us 2. Like, there's no good people in this show. They're all pretty much bad people. Um, society is just kind of screwed with the corporation stuff. Like, this show was just really nihilistic. Um, and there's a comment we're going to get to later. <laughs> but this guy was actually really respectful, so I'm not going to tear him a new asshole the way that I tore the other guy. I'm not even going to read that guy's comment either. But, um, yeah, no. So, um, doom and gloom is fine, but I got to have some version of a hero in the story. Uh, Mango Juice back again. I finished Cyberpunk 2077 in 80 hours when the game dro uh, dropped on last gen. So in the first uh, two weeks before all those passed, before all those patches uh a hard crash every hour for 80 hours uh was worth it for me because i love the non-weapon focused combat path and music influence on the story uh the ending is bad in my opinion uh the show is not for me but the game was um and i just asked if she would recommend uh cyberpunk 2077 and uh she says just wait for the expansion in 2023 so there's a little quick uh thing there i actually gotta so because i was like hmm, maybe i'll go buy uh cyberpunk and she's like yeah just just wait they're they're coming out with an expansion save your money um faux peasy yeah this was definitely uh an adult show that was a bit dark but i really uh but i didn't really see the nihilistic tone to be a problem with the storytelling but point taken oh shout out thank you faux peasy no and i'm not saying i literally said like the show wasn't for me like i'm not saying that because it has nihilistic storytelling it's bad i never even i don't think i said the show was bad like, I, I said that the production of the show is really good. It's a 10 out of 10. Um, I don't, I, it's, the nihilistic tone is not for me. It's just not. It's not. It's not. Why do I do this to myself at 7.30 in the morning? Oh, God. Coffee. I have more coffee being made. This is old coffee. You don't want to know how old this coffee is. Um. All right, Angron the Red Angel. Um. Yeah, that's the class warfare angle. Uh, is what they were going for. Cyberpunk is a genre is all about corporations superseding governmental authority, or being the uh, government and the poor uh, and the and the poor doing what they have to to survive while being portrayed as anti heroes. Uh, the guy who came up with the genre, William Gibson, uh, is a hard leftist and went on the usual fascism rant when Orange Man won in 2016 uh, and was livid about uh, DeSantis, Martha's Vineyard, immigration relocation. <laughs> that was so funny to watch. <laughs> okay, but at least I know, like, what it's rooted in. Like, it, it's okay, so... The cyberpunk thing is rooted in classism, which is one of my favorite words. Let's say it. Say it, children. Marxist. <laughs> oh, I, yeah. Okay. Uh, I did not know any of that. Thank you so much, Angron, the Red Angel. Um, USS Columbia. So I think I disagree with you about how it glorifies the protagonist and all the horrible things they do. Uh, it's shown in a positive light early on, but as the show progresses, you see awful things happen to the members and what their life choices lead to. And in terms of the Marxist view, it's not entirely unrealistic. We live in an age uh, where more people listen to what their favorite companies and actors say than what their governments say. I don't think people should be listening to either of those. Uh, first of all, thank you, USS Columbia, for commenting. That was a very well laid out and very short and concise and to the point thing. Um, the So the glorification of it, right? Um, it the, the glorification of deviancy in the world as a whole. Yeah, the... the, the well, like the last character, he goes out in the Blade of War. I'm talking about the deviancy of society right it glorifies the deviancy of the society the you know the promiscuity of uh, these people the 
you know uh, obvious obviously there's not a prude among them at all like you couldn't say that there's you know there's constant theft constant murder life itself just isn't and they're like yeah but it shows this in the protagonist i was like yeah but the, but it doesn't but it literally tried to make it look like you know even if you're going down into your addictions go down in a blaze of glory like that's what i got out of that final thing and it's just like oh and as long as there's you know as long as there's somebody there to love you your addictions are fine like no fuck that shit that's literally what it seemed like to me at the very end of that show i i you know and, and somebody commented on this later and they were like you know i should watch it for myself and stuff i did fucking watch it for myself it takes like three and a half hours to clear it's not that much it's like yeah it's like watching a longer movie but no i i do think that it glorifies uh the deviancy of the world and i i i i again the deviancy the promiscuity theft burglary murder like all this stuff you know i mean eh, i don't know it's it's i don't know it's not for me it's it's just it's not for me i just it's beautiful heck i even put it on the other night i was sitting there i was like Fuck, i just want something that i've seen before so i can just fall asleep because i can't listen to a podcast that i haven't heard before so i literally put the show on you know and just listen to it while i fell asleep because like it's gorgeous i mean the show is it's it's this show is unbelievably stunning i mean they everything on the production level they hit everything there's not they didn't miss one beat on the production level period it's just it's i it's not it's not my story um so sunny i think you hit the nail on the head the animation although beautiful uh and action being on point the story and motifs are extremely nihilistic i was fully on board after the first episode but it just gets too depressing uh and sub communicated to the audience that human beings are just bags of meat uh no value in life except short-term pleasures live fast die young uh mentality animations uh like these tend to leave me drained with a with a feeling of empty yeah see right there i that's that's the thing right is it's that again the, what he said the live fast and die young mentality that's terrible you know i i like i said you guys was kind of watching the first show i was like all right this is this is weird this is interesting where is this gonna go like how is he gonna be the hero kid and he wasn't like he just leaned into all the corruption that's not that's not a hero that's not somebody you should look up to okay strap in boys and girls because i know what this comment is because i've already read it as i read all of your comments but <sighs> all right i am not going to tear this person apart I am, however, going to tear apart the argument. Okay. So I got to get my thinking cap on here. This, this one's going to be good. This one's going to be really, really good. Okay. I, oh, wow. He did it in paragraphs. I am very glad because that gives me natural stopping points. All right. Shorgoth from five days ago. And he edited it and it spelled out well, but he was very respectful to me in the comments and very respectful to other people in the comments so again i'm gonna rip apart his argument here uh i'm not gonna tear him apart i'm talking about this with experience of 10 years of physical and psychological violence when i was a young man it took me around 25 years uh to fix myself after those events and get out of the induced complex ptsd um i studied the phenomenon through readings therapy personal research uh there's literally not a part of my body without some scar tissue from that time i think you are 100 percent wrong in your opinions because you don't understand the underlying arguments okay so first of all i almost completely wrote this comment off entirely because of all of those prerequisites okay if you are speaking intelligently about something you don't need to come out and say how smart you are before you actually start the argument right? most people who do that um generally have a basic a basic level of knowledge that most people possess especially in the day and age of the internet um so coming out and saying well i went through all the stuff and that's why i know more about this than you it's like well but you haven't proven anything yet okay 
Uh, that is a that is generally um, a tactic that most people will use to knock other people off guard. Oh, 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 you did all these? I don't care. That's the thing. I know a lot of people who've been through physical and mental abuse and things like that. I know people who fixed it, who haven't fixed it. I have not been through that. Don't care to go through it. Don't want to go through it, right? I've got my own crap to deal with. So that's the thing. Your little qualifiers there in the beginning do not matter to the argument, okay? They don't. And I would, I, I, the rest of, again, you were very respectful, but I, I almost didn't read your comments because of this. Okay. When people come out with qualifiers in the beginning, that is a red flag that they do not possess the sufficient amount of information to talk about some things. I'm not saying that about you. I'm saying it's a red flag to your argument. Okay. This show is a study on the logical conclusions of toxic masculinity, except instead of telling you, <clears throat> telling you, they show you through a compelling story. It shows the appeal, but the nuance is made uh, um, in how it ends uh, brutally and pointlessly. The main character never uh, gets to dream his own dreams. He suffers and dies. Mostly everyone he loves uh, suffers, and even the girl who would traditionally be the prize in a hero myth-based story uh, end up alone and sad despite realizing the dream he died for. He lived for uh, others, destroyed himself in the process, and got nothing for it. I literally said this was a nihilistic story. So, okay, the toxic masculinity thing here, and you go on to like explain what the fuck you're talking about. I literally said it's a night. This is a tragedy. This isn't a comedy. So I don't know how we disagree here. Outside of the fact that this, like the toxic masculinity, like you just kind of threw that in there. <laughs> it's kind of like that meme, you know, you sprinkle some stuff. <laughs> okay. I, I literally, I said it was a nihilistic story. This is a tragedy. Okay. This show is a study on the logical conclusions of toxic masculinity. No, this show is literally the logical conclusion of body modification and uh, the over uh, 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 gratification of physical con of the physical condition and how corporations actually use that against the population. That's not toxic masculinity. That's corporatism. And that's what we've been suffering under for fucking years. But the rest of this stuff, like, that's why I, that's, as soon as I started reading some of this, I'm like, okay, like, you get it. Like, you get it. So where do we disagree here? The fact that I don't like the show and you do, I think that's the disagreement. Okay, let's keep going, because this, we ain't even close to done. We haven't even scratched the surface of this one yet. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> yes, he is shown as a compelling, uh, loving, caring guy, and that's exactly the point. Uh, it's a warning that the best uh, that the best intentions are not what matters. Uh, it shows just how much even the best person follows this path for the best reason can easily become a monster. It also shows. Um, it also shows that it's a set of, ex of expectations put on you. How it pushes you to sacrifice yourself for the dreams of others, and in the end. All you get is heartache, a loss of personal identity, and a loss of emotional control. Uh, the show uh, is showing it uh, perfectly and does not glorify it. It shows its uh, deadly attraction, how it pushes, uh, how it is pushed by society on you by giving you no option through coercion and incentives, but it ultimately discards you um, as a used boot okay this i'm sorry this is a very very high school level of thinking right society is pushing you in a direction this this here um da, 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 how it pushes you to sacrifice yourself for the dreams of others and in the end all you get is heartache a loss of personal identity and a loss of emotional control okay that means that most people who suffer loss of personal identity and loss of emotional control are those people who do not take responsibility for their own actions and they do not invest in themselves personally and strive to be better the people who will get pushed through life are those who let themselves be pushed through life i'm not saying that you don't get kicked down sometimes i'm not saying you don't have your bad days i'm not even saying that external forces can't knock you down sometimes they do not knock you down and keep you down all the time 
especially in your own mind. If you are letting your own mind and society doesn't push you again, this is, this goes back to the Marxist thing. Okay. This is very, very Marxist thinking here. The way that society can push the individual into all these things and the individual doesn't have a control over it. That is not true at all. Okay. This is a collectivist mentality style of thinking. Okay. Is this show woke? Absolutely wrong. Woke is intersectional feminism mixed with critical race theory and critical gender ideology using intersectionality to actually create a class based system based off of immutable characteristics and then other characteristics that they so deem based off of your level of impoverishment or possible uh, historical transgressions to a person uh, person slash people of demographic, right? That is not this show is not woke in it, it, it because it doesn't have any of the intersectional stuff in there okay so he um absolutely in the best ways because it's about a form of sexism that is seldom talked about to the point you don't even realize the social commentary that is made in the back oh. it hits so hard because it resonates with some with something every man i know had to deal with at least a few times the uh abnegation of self and emotions to fit the toxic societal mold that uses you like a pawn for the powerful again only those who allow themselves to be used by society this is high school level mentality argument well i just want to look like the other boys in school fucking why this is a peer pressure mentality argument, okay? On the surface, you bulk up slash chrome the fuck up, which is from the show, if you guys haven't seen. He's, I, I like that he's coming at me hard. I like this. This is good, okay? I like, he, he's very well written out. He is, he, I mean, he came everything in paragraphs, very well spoken, super respectful. I like this, okay? So do not mistake me and going at, at this argument like i just get energized when i argue that's it so don't this isn't me mad this isn't me pissed this is just this is this is how i am okay all right on the surface you bulk up or chrome the fuck up uh as if it uh, made you bigger but only the muscle mass grows while the soul under the hood shrivels despite our best intentions to use the power for a good cause ultimately it makes us uh, simply incompatible with society this is real wokeness not a character of caricature of it no it's fucking not okay you are literally twisting that fucking word and this is like the third time this week that i've fucking seen it done okay the problem here is that what you're completely negating is the fact that as as a whole corporations use their influence okay with corporate psychology to manipulate the population into thinking that they all have to look and act and feel a certain way and that even goes into <clears throat> Okay, making sure that a certain sect of the population stays fat and unhealthy and another sect of the population stays uh, stays skinny and potentially healthy. And I'll say potentially there because what's being shown to us a lot of times are people who are literally artificially uh, transformed through artificial methods, Botox injections, you know, all this kind of stuff, like literally things that are not too dissimilar from here, right? Okay, so we're actually getting into uh, the world like this. So you completely, yes, you talk about men kind of being put down in society and pushed aside. That is true to a certain sense, but you only talk about it in the certain sense um, as far as, you know, bulking up and being there. You don't actually talk about the real problem in society where women are saying that they don't need men anymore. And now without women being there and men having someone to protect and someone to provide for and someone to lay their life down for, men are starting to lose their purpose in this day and age, okay? This show didn't make a social commentary on that at all. This show talked about the superficial things that people do to their bodies in order to look outwardly like they fit into society. That is a problem. I mean, look at what the fucking Kardashians have done. They have completely mutilated their bodies in a way that you can't even recognize them as fucking women anymore. And then they go out there and... and and show themselves off to the world as if they're the shining example of what a woman should fucking look like when it takes tens of thousands of dollars of fucking horrific fucking surgery to make somebody look like that and it's fucking disgusting okay but you don't comment on that okay 
And again, you don't understand what real wokeness is here because you don't understand that the, the ideas of wokeism came from critical race theory, which started as <clears throat> college level and Ivy League level uh, law school education which then bled down into other d different practices which then you get critical gender theory critical gender theory and then fourth wave feminism from there all of these things are designed to separate society and categorize us into small little molds to fit us into a different place you don't understand what real wokeness is okay we're still not done <clears throat> Maybe I should be clearer on what toxic masculinity I'm speaking of. Toxic masculinity is an ideology where is an ideology where young men are shamed, beaten out of, or discouraged to feel uh, emotions other than hate and wrath. It pushes us to become warriors without any other uh, identity than a collective one. Uh, its historical function uh, of it was to prime the new generations due to the constant warring nature of early civilization. Through frequent beatings, hazings, and harassment, uh, the prospective uh, sacrificial pawns were separated from their desire to live for themselves and facilitated the idea of sacrificing them through the hero myth. That's an interesting take on it. It's not toxic, though. It's the idea that men should be carved into something is because we are the protectors okay whether that's mentally or physically physically i'm not a very big guy i'm what 511 i think 510 five, i don't know i think they said i was like close to 511 last time i went to the doctor which was a long time ago like 511 fucking and what 175 not a very big guy but my mind you've got to have it chiseled so this idea that society can't ask for men to <clears throat> and here's the thing they don't want men to feel other emotions other than hate and wrath no i think you're wrong they want men to feel what it's like to cherish something and what it's like to that's why we try to invigorate pride that's why we try to invigorate patriotism that's why we try to get men to fall in love with women Okay. because when the chips are down and we see that the thing that we love is it, 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 it is getting attacked we can channel we we as men have the awesome ability to what i like to call the button right i can in an instant hit a button and my like chain flip a switch in my head and my entire body will pulse with adrenaline men have the ability to flip a switch and become monsters if we need to to protect the things that we love and cherish and you don't hit on that i don't know why it's toxic to ask men to cherish something and die for it okay you think toxic masculinity is asking men to be noble if i am misconstruing what you say here correct me but that's what i got out of that Okay. The hero myth is basically a young man that goes against the insurmountable. Okay, I know what the hero myth is. Like, I, okay. And and so the, <clears throat> here is here is where we get into the part of the argument where you just do word salad to try to throw me off as if you actually have a level of information that I don't have, okay? You go into a lot of historical stuff here, okay? Obviously, everybody knows what the hero myth is. It's fucking Luke Skywalker. It's, you know, I mean, fucking most traditional stories right i mean uh, the, yeah the reluctant person basically a young man insurmountable odds right um you know and you say here that you know he does that for you know the re for the respect and reproductive rights of the finest women um you know, those who refused were called cowards and those who failed were forgotten. So identity, respect, and love uh, were, con were contingent on successful attempt at victory against basically faceless evil lord most of the time. Uh, this is, in effect, uh, an old untold social contract. Okay, so then why do we remember the dead? Like, if men are only... I mean, there we've literally had entire societies... That if you died in battle, you were hailed and glorified and remembered forever. So the idea here that 
well, th all of this just stems from the idea of this toxic masculinity and men just wanting to be the hero. No, you are completely wrong on an, uh, um, on an anthropological level. Ah, crap, it took me a minute to think of that word. If you look... If you look at the anthropological studies of a lot of societies back there, some of the warriors that died were glorified and hailed. And there were societies built off of the warrior dying in battle. Like, and it was something to be praised. So the idea here, like, I mean, no, I, you're completely wrong. Like, this isn't the untold social contract. That... To sit here and say that this is, you know, that only these things matter? N no, they don't. It completely depends on the society that we're talking about and the structure of society that we're talking about. Are you saying that people want to be a hero nowadays? I mean, we do, you know, up until recently, we glorified our soldiers and thought that what they did was, you know, a pretty good thing. You know, we were pretty patriotic here. Most people, most people are literally taught to, you know, grow up, go to college, make money. And then, you know, just fuck until you die. It's not even have a wife. It's not even have kids anymore. So the hero myth has nothing to do with the social contract. Now, the social contract has been completely eviscerated in today's day and age. The social contract used to be to procreate and, you know, make sure that we raise the next generation to the best of our abilities. And then we actually gave a shit about where the world was going. Now we don't seem to. The social contract that you're talking about, I have never fucking heard of. And it doesn't even make sense on an anthropological level. Okay. Now let's be real. Uh, it made a certain degree of sense until around World War II, <clears throat> as mass casualties were common in most generations. Very true. Skewing the balance of surviving men versus uh, women in the age of uh, procreation. After all, 50%. Um, uh, after all, lose 50% in the two sexes, and your population is 50% uh, lower than the next generation. But lose all but 10% of men. Uh, and no women and it rebounds in the next one origin yes i'm aware of the origins of the, the the polygamic you know relations in the middle east probably linked to the reality a striking example is in the ottoman empire around the six yes i know i think the 16th century of memory serves with nine okay this here you're literally just trying to do a word salad as if like oh well you don't know any of this information dude i literally know about the fucking ottoman empire okay the Ottoman Empire was strong for about 800 years and they didn't actually go. The Ottoman Empire, that's what it fucking was in World War I. It was known as Persia until we redrew the maps in World War II. Okay, well, we didn't. The United Nations did. <laughs> oh, we're such dicks. Um, but this is where I, this is, so this right here, you're like, well, okay, why are you talking about population here? It has nothing to do with your argument. Nothing. It's just word salad that you're putting in here to try to throw me off base as if this is information that I don't have. And I see this tactic commonly, right? Like, why would I, why would, why enter that in here? Why talk about the hero myth? That has nothing to do with your argument. I mean, the idea of toxic masculinity being where men are shamed, beaten, or discouraged to feel emotions other than hate and wrath, that's not what people have ever fucking done. Like, in small instances. Now, society does that now. That's today. Like, but historically, no. Men were meant to, hey, you need to have a farm. You need to have something that you grow. You need to cultivate. You need to earn. You need... To have a wife and children and make sure that, you know, your seed spreads across. Like, get something to have pride in. Like, literally, that's what we were fucking built on. Okay. So, I'm not going to read the rest of your whole the Ottoman Empire crap here. Because, again, it's completely superfluous to the argument. And it's, it's, it's almost insulting that you would use that against people. Again, that and then your qualifier at the beginning are two things that can be completely thrown out. Most of what you're saying here is simply just a word salad in order to try to throw somebody off of their intellectual base to make them think that they aren't actually in the same league as you. And I'm starting to think that you've probably had these conversations before and you you have very, very, you know, easy things that you can pull from to craft your arguments. Like, I do it too, so...
On the other hand, nowadays, the best survival strategy and the most rewarding one for society uh, is cooperation in trade as our technologies require work and resources from all across the globe, uh, making this old ideology obsolete. Then how the fuck did the Ottoman Empire rule the planet in trade and cooperation? If you know anything about history, societies do not fail and cultures do not crumble until they lose their cooperation with other nations. It is literally as old as human civilization. When cooperation begins to fail, that's when it all goes under. You can see it in Rome. You can see it with the Greeks. You can see it with the Ottoman Empire. When you are the kings of trade in the world, your society flourishes. Once you are no longer the kings of trade and somebody else becomes the king of trade, which is what is happening today. Dude, you need to read a history book. I like most of this stuff doesn't you're like you're just making things up at this point. Okay. It then became toxic as no outlet for aggression is available for most young men uh indoctrinated into it and have emotional capabilities to deal with the social contract i talked about falling falling through no no the problem is is that most young men are not are, are told they're not allowed to build they're not about allowed to create and they're not allowed to cultivate a family young men are literally told you are worthless to society we're going to put we're going to structure our education system around women we're going to structure our court system around women we're going to structure our corporations around women like, you're not allowed to build, you're not allowed to create, you're not allowed to protect. And in the absence of being able to channel your energy to protecting and building, you will destroy. Okay? Our job as men has been and has always been to protect and build. And our modern day society is robbing us of those two things. We are told we are too worthless to have families. We are told we are not good enough to meet women anymore. We are literally told that unless we have a certain level of income or a certain level of look or a certain style or a certain level of arrogance or whatever, we are not allowed to have things. We can't own our fucking own properties because the government steals it from us anymore. We can't go out and buy our own fucking vehicles anymore because the banks tell us we're too toxic online because those fucking rules are coming out now. We are literally being told at every level in our society that men are worthless and you are not allowed to build, you are not allowed to create, you are not allowed to care for, you are not allowed to protect, and you're not even worth putting yourself on the putting your life on the line for anything anymore. And in the absence of being those things, men are losing it because it is in our nature to protect. Okay? I don't know where the hell you are getting this, but the history books that you have read are completely, completely wrong. Holy crap. It then became toxic to uh, no out. Uh, yeah, no outlet. No aggression is available for most young men indoctrinated have emotional capabilities to deal with social contract to talk about falling through. Okay. Uh, they are now misada uh, misadapted emotionally with violent tendencies and self care and self introspective capabilities uh, atrophied, making them potentially more dangerous. So you understand. So you see what's going on to men, but your diagnosis is completely fucking wrong. They suddenly went from uh, the glorified protector class. So holy fuck. Protector class of society to the dangerously unstable one and to someone with poor emotional control. This is a trigger for aggression, depression, um, uh, toxicomony, uh, anxiety, and suicide, and so much more. So you, you said protector class there. But you're only thinking of the violent soldiers. You're not thinking of the men who cultivate the farm fields. You're not thinking of the men who brought up buildings, who came home, who cared for their children, who... Who, who, who cared for their wives. You're not thinking of that protector class. I am the protector class. My wife and children. I protect them. That is my job. And I protect them spiritually. I protect them emotionally. And guess what? When some serious shit fucking happens, it is my job as the man of my family to mentally and emotionally lift that from them. 
It is also my job to carve the minds of my children and make sure that those carvings are beautiful and they can stand the test of time and they cannot be weathered like some of the greatest statues of old. It is my job to cultivate and protect their spirit. You obviously do not have this in your life. And this is why your view is so skewed. So yeah, look at the series again with the new information. You might just see what I'm talking about. You didn't give me any new information. You gave me half-cocked information that it looks like you got from Wikipedia. And I'm not, I, I'm sorry, I shouldn't say that. I said I wasn't going to go after you. I'm sorry. You didn't give me any new information. You gave me a, a twisted version of information that I already possessed. Okay. Also, just one thing. When I'm talking about this, I'm not saying this uh, to disparage men who grew up in it. I did. It fucked me up bad. And I got out. No, you were never taught to protect and care. You were never taught to protect and care. That's the problem. Based off of everything that you said, and again, this is another qualifier here, right? This is another qualifier. This has nothing to do with your argument. You have to inject yourself personally here to make your argument seem like it actually provided more substance than it actually did. It was just a word salad at the end of the day. I appreciate you taking the time to type all this out, but it really was not necessary. Okay? I mean, you didn't provide any information here. You provide... A a couple of non sequitur, a lot of non fucking sequiturs actually, that had nothing to do with the initial argument. I simply wish you, slash anyone reading this who finds themselves in this, the same. I don't think you are worthless. I think you are wounded and need help. Okay, and this is where he's actually reaching out to people and trying. So this, I, I reach out to people, and if you strike a chord, and it, I believe he did strike a chord with somebody here, and I am glad for this. Uh, I know we got taught to be. Uh, self-sufficient not to get help and so on we get shamed against everything here this is basically a child soldier factory on automatic pilot left uh through each generation we're all com uh, we're all complicit and victims at the same times that is false we are not all complicit and we are not all victims that's that's complete no you are only a victim if you ever see yourself as one and i no don't don't no we are not all victims okay you are only a victim if you choose to be a victim, okay? Uh, there is no big dark lord behind it, uh, just societal evolution we have to accept and adapt to. No, you do not. We as men must stand firm, and we are the ones who will hold society to account for its sins. Period. That is what we do. If you are adapting to society, your idea of what is masculine is completely fucking false. We are the stone wall in which society must break upon and not get through. Okay? That is what we as men are supposed to do. I know it sucks to have uh, to learn it all again, but that's for the best. I go, <clears throat> I go through, and I hope it helps at least one person. I went uh, from a dangerous, depressed, poten uh, potential school mass murderer uh, when I was a kid uh, to now a serene man filled with happiness and hope for tomorrow. Well, I am glad that you are. I am glad because it doesn't, it seems like, but it also seems like you have a view of society that is less than yourself. And that is, that is worrisome. Uh, I would have probably been in prison if I had not worked hard on this, but I had no one to talk to me about it. Everybody needs somebody to talk to. And he is right there hundred percent. Uh, so, so you today start with nearly 20 years, uh, head start on me. No, we don't. Um, no, we don't, because you didn't give 20 years worth of information here. Uh, you gave four minutes worth of something I could have looked up on Wikipedia. Overall, um, your argument was based off of false premises of anthropological studies and uh, short like very very short like snippet readings of like how actual societies worked, like the Ottoman Empire and like not understanding exactly how, you know, they rose to their power and it wasn't until they stopped being able to provide some of that stuff. So yeah, um, no, you had a lot of non sequiturs in here. Your view of society is not based on anything other than uh, your own personal past, which uh, I don't think the anecdotal evidence there supports at all. Um, 
I think that you open up your argument by saying that you have more knowledge of this because, you know, something about 10 years of physical and psychological stuff and then 25 years to fix yourself. That's really cool. That's not necessary for the argument. If you actually wanted to come out with an argument, you should have literally started with, I think you're 100% wrong in your opinions because you don't understand the underlying arguments. That's literally where you should have started. And then just, you should have said, I think you're wrong and then just gone into it. Okay. Uh, from that but the, all of those prerequisites and then here at the very end when you're actually trying uh, to and then you're actually trying to you know come out and say oh we're all the same but I totally get I'm not the same as you I am not do not let me into that camp there might be some people out there struggling with some stuff and I understand that okay they also need to understand they're not you they're not victims okay they're not never ever call yourself a victim Understand what you're going through sucks and pick that fucking cross up and own that shit. Own the shit that plagues you and eviscerate it from your mind. So no, they, and again, and then your are then your thing here at the end where you're actually trying to reach out and emotionally connect with people could potentially be a, a manipulation in the argumentation, which I've seen many times before. Um, again, everything here in the middle. So you start off with, I know more than you because 25 years and 10 years of whatever. And then you end it by saying, but we're all the same and I totally get it. And I'm just trying to help the world. And then everything else in the middle here literally didn't provide anything it was your thoughts and opinions on society that weren't based in anything so but regardless Shorgoth I appreciate it that was a really fun that was really really fun I would actually I mean that, I think it'd be a blast to kind of debate you like in real life I think it'd be awesome so um <clears throat> uh, uh Babar Khan holy crap yeah that one took that one took a while Babar Khan dude great review thank you so much I know some other people here didn't think so but thank you so much Babar Khan all right lemon tage good bad whatever just go watch it by yourself stop watching others opinions on the internet make uh, uh make some yours yeah that's what I fucking did L lemon tage like that's <laughs> but that's not your opinion because you don't like the thing that I like. No, it's 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 a good fucking show. It's just too fucking nihilistic for me. I'm sorry. I don't have a view of myself like that. I am not downtrodden. I'm no. Like that's why you're saying this. Like I literally did a review of the show. Stop watching other people's view on the internet. Maybe maybe you're saying that to other people who are watching me. Why is my camera It got moved and now it's showing a side of my monitor and I don't like that. <sighs> Sam Johnson, bad review. Probably, probably. Giovanni Tumini, I agree with you, but only in part. Oh, good sir. Don't tease me like that. You have to do all of the parts, not a little bit. <laughs> yes, it portrays very nihilistic world, but also the show doesn't seem to pretend, uh, doesn't seem to pretend to reflect the world we live in. Um, you have to know who it was made for. Um, the real world, but rather a nihilistic fantasy world in which we find ourselves following these characters. Now, if the show was uh, purposefully uh, trying to suggest that the world is a reflection of our world, that'd be a different story. Mm, it, mm, you and I can have a deeper conversation on that. I think I will, I will respectfully disagree with you, Giovanni Tumania. Um, I did say I totally agree with you that they probably didn't, but I've had time to think about it since then. That's what I like about doing this because I do try to respond to you guys very quickly. A lot of times that doesn't give me time to process the information and really give you guys, man, my gilded is going off right now. Why? What are you guys doing? um so yeah um yeah gilded is going insane right now so it just it, it constantly in my ears <laughs> so um yeah but that's one of the reasons that i do this is because i get to respond to you guys in the comments and then i come back and i fully form my thoughts around stuff and then i actually get to come back to you guys and i get to um uh one correct my mistakes if i made any and two 
uh, I also get to give you guys a fully formed thought process, which I think it's the best way that I can respect you guys for coming here, right? You don't just deserve to have your comments read, your names shouted out on the on the channel, but you also deserved a fully, you know, like, because Sundays, I, I, I'm not at work and I get to give you guys my full attention. And I think that that is the best way that I can respect you guys for being here on the channel. So that's part of the reason I do this. <clears throat> All right, uh, we are going to go to the Constantine uh, featuring Jar Jar himself, the Constantine sequel announcement. Um, Xavier Guzman says, damn, I like the new camera quality slash video look. Thank you so much. I am working to try to give you guys a uh, better video and better sound as much as I can. So if for some reason none of that stuff is coming through well, let me know. Um, because it pisses me off on my sound, especially my sound. It really pisses me off. Uh, Mango Juice. Um... I like Constantine as a character, but the sequel to yet another standalone franchise, just like the Batman reboot, sounds like the new DC owners uh, quit the connected universe stuff instead of trying it again. Uh, new camera looks good. Thank you so much, Mango Juice. Uh, Paul Kinnett, it's a film that should not be touched or dragged uh, out to ruin the original. Abrams doesn't follow the true characters. No, just leave it. As, just leave it as the great film it is. Cheers! Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Paul. Uh, cheers to you, good sir. I will cheers my coffee to you, good sir. Uh, Kyle Phillips, colors are different. Thought I was just really high, but then you said you got a new camera. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> oh my god. That's great. I love you, Kyle Phillips. You're you're fucking fantastic. Billy Bobsack! Uh you went for OnlyFans light you went from OnlyFans lighting to amateur porn lighting. <laughs> hey, stepping up, I guess. Uh, I feel like OnlyFans pays better though. Oh. Huh. I don't know. Any OnlyFans ladies out there who've done amateur stuff? Like, what pays better? <laughs> oh, God. I don't need that. Um, I don't need somebody to come. Oh, Billy Bob Sack again. Uh, bad robots, a death sentence for any franchise slash property. Uh, Angron, the Red Angel. Anything Jar Jar touches is inevitably garbage. Uh, yeah, that is not a lie, Angron, the Red Angel. Uh, Garcia, XV Legend. I have very little knowledge of the character, but I have seen the Justice League Dark and Apocalypse War animated movies where Constantine appears. Um, haven't seen this movie, but one of my closest friends loves the character and likes the movie, so no doubt he'll be excited for a direct sequel. I've mostly seen Superman and Batman movies that I deem uh, them to be the best, uh, aside from Dawn of Justice and Batman and Robin, for obvious reasons. Uh, Man of Steel and Batman Forever are my personal favorite. Ooh, Batman Forever fan. Interesting. Are my personal favorites that I can't help but adore. Uh, of course, I've seen the first two Superman films and Nolan's Batman trilogy. Weirdly, I like part twos from both of those iterations. Uh, all that aside, having J.J. Abrams working on a uh, working on franchise properties is pretty much a bad sign. Thank God I was never into Star Trek, but I do feel sorry for the hardcore fans. But hey... Uh, people love Keanu Reeves and they'll see it because of him. Yeah, I just wish people would think about the production value. Uh, um, yeah, the production value that an actor, uh, the dude who voiced uh, Batman for DC Super Pets movie, which I did not know and I don't too care much to watch it. Yeah, um, yeah, pretty much. Uh, Matt Ryan, great in Justice League Dark and Apocalypse War. Um, uh, and then the, I would say, I don't remember Superman 2 that well. I always remember the one with Richard Pryor, where he was the, uh, did the, all the computer hacking. That was great. Uh, that one was awesome. And then, yeah, people will go see this because Keanu Reeves is in it. And, uh, JJ Abrams just seems to fuck everything up that he touches. So, um, yeah. But thank you so much, Garcia XP Legend. I appreciate you being here. Uh, dead end 4991 the quality does look much better thank you so much uh, convoy bebop am i excited to see keanu reeves return as constantine am i more scared because of jar jar abrams and how he is also yes <laughs> right uh 
Alan Anderson, they have to include Jar Jar by law because he has a stake in the franchise because he was shopping around a script for a TV show with uh, a black Constantine. Okay, so yeah, this actually caused me to do uh, another video. So this like one of this and another comment that I got that called me out for being an idiot, which they always do that. Never not call me out for being dumb, right? Um, and you guys will see like if if I'm actually being dumb, I'll cop to it. If I'm misinformed or you guys think that I'm misinformed, I will go through and I will tear apart your arguments just like I just did, okay? Um, he is there purely for legal reasons and will have no creative control uh, and or input on the movie. He is quite surely beyond livid that the WB started up their sequel before he could lock down a network for his bastardized version of Constantine. I fucking hope he is. Um, also, Alan Anderson, your exaggerated radio voice with extreme swings and emotion <laughs> and emotion tone uh, and inflection are sort of irritating. Pick an energy level and stick with it. Fuck off. No. <laughs> Don't tell me what to fucking do. Okay. Also, this thing here, like literally all right, talking normally. This is literally how I talk normally. The reason that I do that I get elevated like this one is to cover up background noise in my house because I don't have a soundproofed house. I don't actually have a soundproof room. I'm literally at the bottom of my fucking stairs in a corner. Okay. And two, this is my fucking personality. Ask any one of my friends, ask my wife. I will be talking normally and I'll just slowly fucking start to ramp myself up. And then, I'll just, you know what? Whatever. It doesn't matter. Like, this is my personality. No, I am not going to pick an energy level and I'm not going to change my personality. Sim no, no. But Alan Anderson, thank you for commenting twice. I actually, and I <laughs> don't fuck off. I'm sorry. That was just for funsies, okay? That was it's just a little bit for funsies. <laughs> oh, God. Hellview Lane. Yeah, okay. He calls me out here, and I deserve it. Hellview Lane, thank you for calling me out here. <sighs> All right, time to eat my crow. You didn't even say his <laughs> you didn't even say his name. Say his fucking name. The man who plays Constantine and is uh and is Constantine Matt Ryan is Constantine Keanu Reeves has been typecast for every uh, goddamn uh book hero and uh, villain that hasn't shown up on the screen yet. Matt Ryan loves playing Constantine uh and he is I think he meant he is Constantine. It was the reason they killed him off of the TV show because if J.J. Abrams wanted it to happen, that's the only reason it happened. If you don't like the Constantine show or at least give it a chance, uh, you don't like Hellblazer. And yes, Constantine has been a DC property for a long time since the late 70s. Okay, yes. So, one. No, I have seen parts of the Matt Ryan Constantine. I have also seen him when he was brought in to Arrow to play Constantine again for like two episodes. It was really cool. Um, I've also seen his voice work in the DC animated movies. Fucking fantastic. The man is Constantine. Just fucking oozes it. Just kind of like Nathan Fillion is Nathan Drake, right? And if you don't know what I'm fucking talking about, go look at the Uncharted, um, uh, the Uncharted, what was it? Fan film that was done with Nathan Fillion. Oh, it's fucking incredible. Okay. Matt Ryan is is also Constantine the way that Robert Downey Jr. is Iron Man, okay? And I know when I was a kid and the Constantine movie first came out, I did not know it was a DC property. As I got older, I went, oh, okay, yeah. Okay, that makes sense that it's a DC property. Like, okay, yeah. I didn't know it when I was a kid. I know it and I have known it for a long time that it has been a DC property. So if I misspoke there, I apologize. But yep, had to eat my crow on that one. Thank you so much, Hellview Lane. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Um, yeah, yeah, I had to, yep, sometimes, sometimes. Uh, Reply Guy <laughs> comes onto my channel and then runs away. Yeah, I'm probably not going to read his. Uh... Actually, where was his comment? Huh. Oh, I think his was under the side. Holy fuck, I think he deleted his comment. <laughs> oh my god, I bet he deleted his fucking comment. Oh, that's fucking great. Oh man, that's awesome. <laughs> oh, that's fucking great. Uh, from Laura, I've been missing ADWC for a while. Glad I found you again. Well, thank you so much, Laura. 
Uh, Toxic Crusader, I love how the uh, anti-Semitic reply guy says Toph was made with feminism in mind as if uh, she is the only badass female on the show. Seriously, does Katara, Suki, Kyoshi Warriors, Tai Lee, Maya, Zula mean nothing to this Jew hater? No, they don't because it doesn't fit the fucking narrative. It doesn't fit the fucking narrative. Toph doesn't fit the fucking narrative either, but they have to take something and change it. So no, no, it was always this way. You guys are just too stupid because your argument is failing, so you have to fucking change it. There's like three times this week somebody's trying to, you don't understand, woke, and I'm like, you're just trying to change the definition. No, the fuck, I am not. That is literally where it came from. It came from university indoctrination. Mm. Thank you so much, Toxic Crusader. I appreciate you. Lucas Garrett, destroy the knucklehead with facts, Royce. That's all that's needed, buddy. Thank you so much, Lucas Garrett. I, yeah, I wasn't going to do this until he changed his shit. And and then I was like, all right, all right, time to push his shit in. Like, you're going to edit your comment and try to make it look like I said some, no, uh-uh, uh-uh. Nope, 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 no, no. I will wield the internet like the fucking sword of Damocles and hold it over you forever. It's amazing, which is what the proverbial sword of Damocles is. It is the sword that's always, it's like held over you and it could potentially, anyway. Um, Kyle Phillips, um, you may have just opened a floodgate. Have fun with that. I'll be on the high ground. <laughs> Bring it, bitch. Bring it. Bring it. You guys want to come at me? Let's fucking go. Let's fucking go. It's fun. I love it. It's fun. Internet brawls are fun. It's great. All right. Uh, all I can say is screw off phonies. Thank you so much, Garcia XB legend. Uh, dead end 4991 that was awesome lol <laughs> apparently people like it when i go at these guys ram <laughs> he quotes me here guess what motherfucker the internet's forever gotta love it yeah yeah i was a little uh i was a little heated anger on the red angel tomboy supremacy <laughs> yeah pretty much <laughs> well because Toph was a tomboy Toph was a typical tomboy which is a typical phase for most young girls to go through or for at least a lot of young girls to go through and instead what they're trying to do is they're trying to take because again that's the reason the tomboy thing happens is because new chemicals are being introduced to the body and then it does and the brain takes time and it eventually works itself out I mean we aren't fully developed um neurologically until we're 25 I mean we're men go through puberty until we are 25 like, so think about that. Think about how much change there is to the body. And for so for a girl to want to come out and be a tomboy or whatever, it's perfectly normal. But you have these sickos out there that are just like, let's just eviscerate and mutilate. I mean, I understand what it's for. They're obviously trying to eviscerate and mutilate children now for some version of population control, right? As long as we can mutilate them when they're young and make it fashionable to be mutilated when you're young to a point where you can't actually reproduce, then they get their population control agenda that they've been going for for the last 50 fucking years. <clears throat> uh, Maji Chan, on the bright side, the fact that you are pissing people off and uh, backing your opinions while doing so means you're on the right track in the first place. Well, thank you. Uh, people shouldn't get offended by others' opinions. If anything, opinions should be shared. It's the uh, it's the only why... Okay. I think there was a, I think there was supposed to be a word in there. I will read this best I can. Opinions sh should be shared. It's the only why to understand and respect each other as human beings. It's the only reason why, wait, it's the only way to understand and respect each other as human beings. Yeah, it's the, oh, it's the only way. It's the only way. Okay. 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 It's the only way to understand. Okay. I see what you're saying there. Sorry. Um, if someone tries uh, to pick a fight simply over a character that, has no merits IRL uh then how narrow-minded is that uh person and would they simply be considered a sheep uh have a drink for me crazy you earned it <laughs> well I am drinking coffee today so thank you so much Maji Chan um I don't like calling people sheep but man it just feels like it more and more it really does doesn't it it really does I don't like it but you might be onto something there, Maji Chan. Thank you so much. Corey Sanford, thank, keep up the great content. Oh, I appreciate it, Corey Sanford. I will do my best. Uh, Giovanni Tuminia, wow, how did I miss this major own? I don't know, dude. I post every day, well, like almost every day. Like, just be here anywhere from like 6 to 8 p.m. Central time. And like, uh, yeah, you'll see my content. I don't know how you missed it. Probably because you don't love me. I mean, I get it. It's fine. Not everybody does. Whatever. You know, it's cool. 
So I, oh my God, we still have three more videos to go through. Wow. Wow, I actually did content this week. Oh my God, look at me. Look at me, guys. I did content this week. Oh, I feel accomplished. <laughs> All right. Uh, this is uh, Shadowversity's $178,000 crowdfund. Um, Faux Peasy, shout out. Man, this stuff has not been good for my wallet. Dude, you and me fucking both. Like that. I'm buying the cameras for the channel. I'm trying to get better audio equipment for you guys. I'm trying to get better. Like, yeah. Trying to buy good beer to drink on stream. Well, that's for me, though. I was going to say for you guys, but good beer is for me. <laughs> oh, hey, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do one of those cool things where I leave and then I come back and then I tell you guys you have no idea what happened because of the magic of editing, right? Okay, so let's do that thing because I, I need more coffee because this is this is going a little long this week. All right, and with the magic of editing, you guys don't even know that I left. <laughs> all right, Sunny Kim. Odell is awesome. 90 shilling is one of my favorites of all time. 90 shilling's got some good stuff. Or wait, no, 90 shilling is just a... No, wait, is it a brand? Or... I have had 90 shilling before. I don't remember if it's a singular beer or a brand. I do remember... I think I liked it. Did I? I don't remember. It is good, though. I like. I know a lot of people like it. Now I'm, I don't remember. Huh, it's been a while since I've had a 90 shilling. It's been years. Mm. Yeah, and I was drinking the Odell's on this. Oh, that Odell's Peach Rambler. Oh. oh, it's like magic on the tongue after drinking like Bush Light and Bud Light. Ugh. I mean, wrong. I drink them, but. <sighs> Kyle Phillips, as an amateur writer myself, the best thing I uh, can get right now is exposure. Hey, you're always welcome to read one of my poems on your channel. I will do that, Kyle. Send me the best one that you can and say, um, read this on your next reading the comments video. Like literally, like send it to me and be like, hey, you've got to read this on your next reading the comments. Uh, Lionel Polo. Uh, what's up, Royce? What's going on, man? What's going on? How you doing? Jolly Roger, indie comics moving well. Yeah, very much so, absolutely. Toxic Crusader, be great. Yes, be great. Be great. Listen to Eric July. Just be great. It's literally not that fucking hard. When you wake up in the morning and you feel bad, just be great instead. That's. It is literally a mentality shift. And when you shift that mentality in your brain and you get them tires spinning, dude, just, just keep going for it. Xavier Guzman, it's fun getting into comics now. Isom is the first comic I've ever bought, but I'm looking forward to buying other ones as well. I'll probably check this one out. Awesome. Uh, Xavier Guzman, on a side note, it's fucking hilarious that She-Hulk is the worst performing show for Disney so far. Yeah. I won't watch it, but I have heard so many not good things about it. And I have seen scenes from that show because they get shared on Twitter. And I'm like, what? How? How? Uh, dude, it's made by 40-year-old fucking wine women. It's made by 40-year-old fucking single wine women. I swear. Uh, Lord Plankton. No. We're not going to give Plankton that kind of power. Uh, I haven't been too interested in comics for a while, but man, Shad is making me want to start reading them again. Good, good. I am abs. Yeah. 
That's what we got to do. We've got to be fans for these guys because if we're not going to be fans for these guys and we're not going to dedicate our channels to covering them and dedicate our channels to covering their storylines and stuff, then no, we got to be fans for these guys. Uh, Natalie confirmed. Maybe he'll actually hire an editor this time and it won't be an amateur's mesh, LOL. Hey, everybody's got to start somewhere. And you know what? A lot of people like what he did. You know? I mean, and he can learn. Just go say, hey, man, can you do some more editing this time? I just, I feel like it wasn't quite up to par. And maybe if you let him know that, he would probably listen. So, but yeah, no, Um, who knows? I mean, yeah, he might, I don't know what he's doing. We'll see. But a lot of people did like this one, so. Uh, <laughs> I, why, do, why do I know this word and I can't? And I can't read it. Diagonies of Sinope. Well, damn, I hope she doesn't take the Vegeta pop in the divorce. LOL. Okay, because that's when you got to go up and be like, you got to go up to your wife and be like, hey, babe, hey, babe, hey, babe, babe. Um, uh, and I was just like, no, divorce isn't an option. And she bought that Vegeta pop figure for me as a, um, as a gift. She was literally walking through a store and she saw that. She was like, oh, I think this is his favorite character from that show that I didn't know. And now she knows that show. But this was like years ago I got that thing. Um, and now she knows the show and now she's like, yeah, I get why he's your favorite character. I'm like, see, I fucking told you. Uh, but yeah, so she bought that for me as a gift. A lot of people are like, why do you have fucking pop figures? It's like, I, my wife bought it for me. Like, fuck off. Like, why don't you have a wife that buys you pop figures? Like, cause some people ask me that, you know, why? But anyway, thank you so much. Di di Diogenes of, of Sinope. I, I, why do I feel like I should be able to say that? And I can't. Diogenes. Diogenes. Okay, I'm just not gonna. I'm just. I'm just. I'm gonna keep moving on. Keep moving. Just. Just keep plowing forward. Oh god. This one had a lot of comments. Why are you guys commenting so much this week? Oh my god. Holy crap. Uh, do his comment first. All right, and scroll all the way back. Kyle Phillips, Hollywood is kind of like Vatican City. They play by their own rules, and you should keep a close eye on your child when you visit. Sir. Sir. One can also say that about DC. <laughs> uh, Mango Juice, House of the Dragon is indeed good, unlike Game of Thrones Season 8. Uh, i rather see no Constantine than a 2022 script where he isn't like the character from the comics. Don't mess him up just to send a message to the fans like me. Yeah, I think I agree with you there. And Mango Juice, she is the uh, commenter from Germany. Um, so very, very like, yeah. No, she's been commenting a lot lately. So thank you so much. Uh, yeah, no, don't mess him up just to send a message. Be like, well, we're just trying to go after the toxic man boys. Blah, 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 blah. Shut up uh guy gad boys who i haven't seen him comment in a while ha couldn't happen to a nicer guy yeah because i'm talking about the destruction oh yeah jj abrams dropped by hbo and apple that's the video we're on right now i could have said that two comments ago and i didn't so yeah jj abrams dropped by hbo and apple uh guy gad boys ha couldn't happen to a nicer guy uh maybe the drones abrams sent over to work on the rings of power uh will get shut down too matt ryan was was good as Constantine on the original show, then somehow he ended up playing that character on Legends of Tomorrow with some of the Arrow refugees and others. And I uh, don't think that did much for his career. Last time I checked in on the show, uh, the episode featured tap dancing lesbians on a spaceship, and I'm not kidding. Okay, sir. So you're not allowed to come in to my comment section and then ruin a character that I like. Well, like, oh, he's associated with the tap dance, with the tap dancing uh, lebians, you know. Uh, that show is fucking terrible. That show is terrible. Guy Gad Boys, thank you so much for commenting, even though you make me depressed. Uh, uh, Bright, which is B R one, G H T. If that's your real hair, I may have, I may start to hate you. Life isn't fair. It's real. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, that's my real hair. It's that is what it is. And it eh. I don't even have to brush it half the time. Sometimes I just wake up and it does its own thing. Actually, when it's shorter, I when my hair is cut like shorter, like 
probably when you guys jumped into the channel um it was shorter then um yeah i usually don't have to even fucking like brush it i can wake up and i got bed head obviously when i have long hair you have to run a brush through it every day so um but yeah when it's shorter it, i can i my my hair is so coarse that when it's shorter i can literally just brush it and style it with a brush. I don't have to use gel or mousse or hairspray or anything. I fucking I might use gel like once a fucking year, maybe. Um, but yeah, for the most part, no. My hair just does its own thing. So uh, I have an agreement with it. If it leaves me alone, I leave it alone. Super Neil Comics. Um, it is fine for you to make the occasional mistake. Well, yeah, it's fine for everybody to make the occasional mistake, Super Neil Comics. And uh, I I also think that uh, if you make mistakes, you got to you gotta start off with them. You got to lead with those mistakes. And that's the mistake I was talking about. I didn't, you know, I didn't talk about Matt Ryan being Constantine in that one video. So I corrected it in this video. And now I corrected it again because I need to, you know, it's good. To, it's good to correct those things, right? Uh, Super Neil Comics, J.J. Abrams, uh, just makes mostly bad, grandiose, bad remakes. Yeah, or mostly big, grandiose, bad remakes. Yes, yes. Uh, Super Neil Comics again. Uh, Top Gun Maverick is still, um, is still in my most local movie house. That's insane that that movie is still being played in the theaters. That thing has legs for days. Uh, William Irazo. Uh, good. He haven't made good content in years. Yeah, hopefully he keeps losing more and more projects and has to keep shopping around because I'm getting fucking tired of this asshat destroying all of the properties that we enjoy. Um, uh, why the hell was I in Star Trek 6? Uh, that's what he gets for creating, uh, a Star Wars villain that is a ripoff of JP from Grandma's Boy. <laughs> Uh, Kurt Franklin I would cast Guy Pierce as Constantine or maybe Adrian Brody Guy Pierce is a little on the old side although one of my favorite movies that Guy Pierce was in he was uh, Fernand Mondego in The Count of Monte Cristo in two was it 2000 or 2001 I can't remember early 2000s starred Jim Caviezel Guy Pierce absolutely fantastic um, iteration of the Count of Monte Cristo. I know a lot of people argue that it's not as good as the original from the 70s, um, but the book itself is one of those books that would be hard to adapt. I actually looked at a book review one time of it to see if it was close to the source material. Because again, money's tight and buying books and shit's kind of expensive. But um, yeah, uh, but no, I, I really liked Guy Pierce in that movie. Sorry, oh, it's also like one of my favorite fucking movies ever. Or Adrian Brody, Adrian Brody, Adrian Brody. Somebody comment and let me know what movies Adrian Brody was in so I can get a picture of who he was. Because I'm drawing a, I know the name, drawing a blank. I think the Keanu movie was just okay. I don't think it was a big hit or <clears throat> had a lot, uh, or had a lot of cult status. Uh, so a reboot scene, or wait, I don't think it was a big hit. Or had a lot of cult status. So a reboot seems logical. May need a big star though. Um, I don't think they're going to do a reboot. I think they're going to do a direct sequel. And it's a huge cult following now. It's kind of like with the Boondock Saints. So, so what happened with Constantine is similar to what happened with Boondock Saints. Came out, went under the radar. Nobody really cared about it. Then people started seeing it. And they were like, oh my god, this is great. And they started showing it to their friends. And they're like, oh my god, this is great. And, and that's how it happened. Uh, Frank Verisco, JJ bastardizes properties so he gets the merchandising rights. It's like instead of getting a new pair of Nikes, you get a new pair of Nikes. <laughs> and he's spelled that N Y K E S. So Nikes, yes, instead of N I K E S. Yep, I think you're right, Frank. Absolutely. Thank you for commenting. Uh, Kevin Ivory, how far into Jar Jar's Constantine script was John replaced with Joan? <laughs> Dude. Dude. Oh, yeah. Maynard Keenan, you guys decide if this was a drugs joke or a Jew joke. Because I don't know. I took it as a drugs joke, but I could very, be very wrong. Uh, Mr. Royce, people with uh, the biggest noses have all the push uh, money in Hollywood. In Holly weird. I think it's a Jew joke and how bit like, you know, the Jews run the um, financial financial stuff. In the world i think that's what he was going for he actually just commented like an hour like literally as i was sitting down to record this video 
So yeah, um, are a lot of people Jewish in Hollywood? I don't know. I don't know. I just, I've heard the joke many times and like, but that the history of the Jewish people is a very, very poor and broken one. Like they've almost never been rich. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I just, I don't know. Uh, Disney investor comes out against ESG. Boy, you guys just really didn't give a shit about this one. Like, let's see. I think let's let's go back here. Let's go back here. Yeah, 67 views. Motherfucker been up for like two fucking days. You guys didn't give a shit about how a Disney investor is coming out against some of the worst fucking business practice that's trying to direct our society down to the cultural Marxist fucking hellscape. I tried. I tried. I tried to get you guys involved. I tried. And you hated me for it. But that's okay. This is the last video for the week. Super Neil Comics. You need more likes. Please, uh, YouTubers, come to this channel and make it great. Uh, that would be amazing if that happened. Uh, when did he... I didn't even... All right. Um, Super Neil Comics again. ESG is probably bad for business in the long run. Uh, yes, it's horrible for business in the long run. It is completely designed to uh, eliminate competition and uh, completely eviscerate... The free market it will be a 100 centralized corporate or not even corporate bank controlled economy uh super neo comics i hate esg yeah no it's a bad thing that's why i did a video on it and said hey investors coming out calling this crap out is a good thing but you guys hate me and didn't want to watch it so that's just how it is Kyle Phillips thanks for getting angry for me I'm trying to change myself and I know the hate is killing me okay don't don't hate and hate and anger are two totally different things okay and a lot of people don't understand that anger and hate are two different things okay here's the thing as men we have it within us to change into monsters on a dime and that is necessary for the defense of the things that we care about okay that is necessary if you are if that emotion is coming out, find a way to get that out. Go start a gym membership. Go start learning how to box. Go do something that puts that aggression out into like a punching bag or something and literally use and hit that button. Hit that adrenaline button button and let it come out so your body can process all that stuff naturally. And that way you can actually filter through and go through the kidneys and all that. You can get rid of it. Okay um don't let it kill you get it out use it it's not a bad thing to feel that well up inside you it's why we have it it's there for a reason we just have to make sure that we're not directing it in the wrong areas but learning how to control it and use it and call upon it when the time is necessary that's that's the key that's what you have to do so thank you so much kyle phillips i appreciate it uh, David Francisco, do you have any ideas for a superhero slash sci-fi comic where the Lex Luthor type of billionaire uh, bad guys are the ones who owns the media? Nothing comes to mind. I mean... Not that own the media specifically. Um, cause the bad guys usually always have their fingers in a lot of different pies and the illicit dealings of like businesses around those, the cities and stuff like that and corporations. So like, but not specifically the media. Um, but anyway, thank you so much, David Francisco. I wish I could have given you a better answer than that. I'm sorry. Uh, Lord Plankton. No, oh, Lord Plankton. I am not. No. Plankton. No. No. Anyway, uh, didn't know you were on Rumble. I'll be sure to subscribe there, too. Thank you so much. Yeah, we're on Rumble. Uh, also, Odyssey. Also, Gilded. Links in description. Go. Links in description. Seriously. Yeah, we're on all those places. Got to be on those places. Um, you know, because we got to uh, have a place to get the word out, you know, about things. So, yeah. Yeah, 67 views. 67. Wait, did that just go up? Did you guys just start watching this as I'm recording this video? this isn't live so you guys wouldn't know all right well thank you guys so much so i i really appreciate this i love reading your guys's comments this is the longest reading the comments ever probably due to having the longest comment on my channel ever 
okay and i am super excited to uh see all of you guys down in the premiere chat i hope you guys are having a blast in the pre premiere chat i hope you guys are having a blast with the channel and i look forward to seeing you on all of my next videos don't forget to like the video comment on this one and because i will read it next sunday if you comment on this one and subscribe to the channel for future a drink with crazy content thank you guys so much for being here and i look forward to seeing you next time cheers everybody Thank you for watching A Drink With Crazy. If you liked the conversation, make sure to click here to see more.